Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. We are in our series five uh, or session five. We're talking about how the heck to keep employees motivated to learn and remain engaged. Why? So they can stay with the organization longer. And our mission vision is achieved for everyone. Today, we want to talk about train the trainer and our expert, Carrie Graham, PhD, is going to help us with that. So, Let's just jump right in, Carrie, and tell me about, you know, what the goal of a train the trainer plan is and what even is a train the trainer plan? Yes, absolutely. My goal for train the trainer programs is to support the individual who has to present information, but supporting them in a way that they are confident and competent in facilitating learning for adults, whether it's employees or clients. Now, I I am very deliberate with my words in that regard because so often um, people think of train the trainer as giving an individual information that they can then pass on to another person. To me, that is a technical skill. When we think about training the trainer in facilitation, That is truly, again, about the individual. It's about the facilitator. Are they, do they understand what their natural skill sets are as well as their learned skill set? And this is the example that I always use. I've had people come to me who say either they themselves are reserved, shy, don't like the public speaking element of it, terrified of all the things. And what I always say to them is, you know the content. We don't need to focus on that. You know the content. What are you most comfortable doing? Are you comfortable listening? Are you comfortable asking thoughtful questions? If that's the case, that's what you need to leverage. Because when we're standing in front of people, the thing that keeps us relaxed is doing what we know we're good at. Right. So when I am working with a facilitator, not a teacher, I like to call people facilitators of adult learning. I always ask them, what are you comfortable doing? If it's someone who says, you know, when I get nervous, I start talking really fast. I talk a lot. I'm over here. I'm over there. I say, okay, well, let's take a deep breath. Right. Do you enjoy even speaking or is that simply a response? But thinking about or helping people recognize what are their natural abilities, let's leverage that. I I tell the story, I was a shy child growing up. I'm still pretty reserved. And speaking at conferences nationally, internationally, I might break, I've been known to break out into a sweat. But what I've learned is if I stop practicing beforehand, that gets me to relax because I know my content. So I don't need to do that. Right. If it's a small group because I love to, and I'm genuinely interested in other people, I leverage asking thoughtful questions because then I don't have to talk. It's about them, but it truly helps them in the facilitation process. So when when I refer to a train the trainer and one that really works, a train the trainer plan that really works, I say go back to the facilitator. Who are they? What are skills that they have that we can leverage for them to use when they're facilitating and they're effective? Now, the content part of it, that's different wherever you go, right? Pharmaceutical sales, you got to learn the drugs, right? Whatever the case may be. But if it's someone who's really needs a lot of help with facilitation, that's that's what I recommend as the as the solution to it. It's really leveraging what you're already good at and exactly. being confident in that so that when you are in front of your audience, you're relaxed and poised. 
I have it. to I have to admit that I find it really, really hard to think that anyone could not be confident and poised after they've had at least a 60 second discussion with you. The Aww. tone, the <laughs> demeanor, the calmness that you bring to the table is second to none. Let me tell you, I've got oh, some stats okay. for you. OK, OK, so in one study. Train the trainer champions felt more confident in their own abilities after going through a train the trainer program with a professional. Another study discovered that employees' knowledge levels wound up rising by 28.71% following train the trainer programs and those facilitators putting that into action. Additionally, staff evaluations of trainings led by train the trainer champions met the desired criteria for effectiveness in training across the board everywhere that it was installed. With that being said, I don't know. Is this the right time to get your phone number? I don't know. I didn't know. Maybe at the end. Maybe at the yeah, end. I don't yeah, know. Back I'll to get you. That. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I, I have a couple of comments on on what, you know, uh, Dr. Carey was just talking about it. And I, my fingers here are going, okay, I have two things. Don't forget what they are. Number one is... Folks that are listening, please, just because somebody is an expert at a topic, a product, a service, it doesn't mean that they're the one that should be doing the training. Yes. It mean that there's the one that should be yes. doing the onboarding, the orientation, you know, all of that, because they need to be trained. They might be an expert, but they might be a horrible communicator. <laughs> yes. I, I want to take a moment, Wendy, and just put a pin in that. Please write that down, people, if you're listening. Just because you've been doing the job for so many years does not mean that you would be a great facilitator. And for people who are picking facilitators, don't pick someone just because they've got, they're the most seasoned. So thank you right. so much for saying yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's so important. I see it all the time. And often even the person who's the expert um, doesn't, they're like, I don't want to be up there. That's not yeah. my up. I don't want to do the training. Now, I've had in the past where I say, okay, I'm going to have the expert come in for Q&A mm -hmm. or something like that, or they'll sit in the room and then we could defer, defer to them when technical questions come up, but they don't want to be in front of the room. They probably don't even want to be in that training either. And so we want to make sure everybody that's in there, especially the facilitator, actually wants to be there, which leads me to another thing too, that just to kind of go off of what you were saying, like, if we train, if we've been trained to train and then we train on what we're, well, what we know or what we're comfortable at, then we're going to do better. And I'll give you an example for myself. Um, in the past, I have been thrown into training topics that I'm like, yeah, I kind of know that, but I'm not passionate about it. And boo, I wouldn't have wanted to attend it, that training. I would have gave myself like a, a negative star instead of even a one or a low star because I wasn't passionate about it. I didn't know the material, material enough even though I'm a good trainer of pretty much any topic. And so it made me really realize um, later as an adult, because my brain was working going, hey, why don't you say no to that from now on? Now I refer that to other people. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And you, you actually remind me of a situation where I was asked to come into an organization and facilitate a training. And I knew the content globally but i didn't develop that training um sequence agenda i didn't develop that and i didn't know the people i was just given information and because i'm a strong facilitator and i knew the content generally i actually did really well and they the people the attendees commented we want you to come back and i did go back and they were happy about it but as the facilitator I had to work extra hard during that time because I didn't know the people. I didn't understand. I sort of understood the um, the business, but not the culture. Right. And yep. so it goes back to you need people like when you're building a training, you have to remember it's about the individual attendees and they have interaction together in the organization so you've had you really should know the culture part of it as well um 
and it, it makes it more effective. It helps you understand value systems as well as, you know, direction that people want to go in. So that that is that's a critical part of it. It really is. This has been so, so informative. I'm sure that our listeners want to connect with you online. Where can they find you? They can find me if they want to have live conversation. I'm over on LinkedIn, uh, Dr. Dr. Carrie Graham. And if they want at, the, at their own pace, look around at my work, they can go to my website, drdrcarriegram.com. And I've got resources there. And just reach out to me schedule get on my schedule and let's have a conversation about what your needs are i'm always happy to to listen and provide some calm support i love it thank you so much for this calm and helpful information and thanks everybody for joining us talking about keeping employees motivated to learn and remain engaged take care thank you for joining the hr empowerment podcast brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.